And let's just let the name of Jesus be over your week, over your circumstances, over relationships, over finances, over purpose, over destiny, over sickness, uh, oh, over everything tonight. You know, I don't know if you realize this, we're kind of a, a unique church here. At any one time, we usually have about six to eight people that uh, without a miracle, they will die. And they come here because of the testimonies that we have that we have released from here quite often. But did you know that it's in the atmosphere? It's not just from getting a hand laid on them. And part of what what we have as an atmosphere is you, is you're worshiping the Lord, not us worshiping the Lord. It's the atmosphere that you're creating for others. And instead of it have to be, oh, let's go in for a spiritual fight, it gets to be a spiritual encounter. Well, you know, which would you rather have? I, you know, I vote for this for the encounter. I don't mind fighting when I have to fight, but I don't want to fight when I don't have to fight. And so uh, that's one of those things. And so I'm just asking you, not that you can't already worship amazingly or you weren't already entering in, but keep our eyes on Jesus. There's no other name above the name of Jesus, but also know that you're creating an atmosphere for somebody else's miracle. You know, you'll get it because the Bible says that whatever you sow, you reap, right? The Bible says for those that seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all the other things are added unto you. But, you know, because we don't take the time to say that sometimes, we just kind of wait and see how worship feels rather than to realize that, yes, we're going to enjoy the presence of God. Yes, we're going to have an encounter with the Lord. But, yes, we're going to build a habitation for lives to be saved. Amen? For miracles to be released in the midst of that. Can we just go back and maybe just uh, stay there for about a minute? There's, there's no other name higher than Jesus. No other name higher than Jesus. No other name higher than Jesus. Could just start saying that and declaring that out as we just declare that out and shift this atmosphere, and even our bodies will begin to change. There's no other name higher than yours, Jesus. No other name is higher than Jesus' name. No other name.
Hallelujah. Just as we're declaring the name of Jesus, I just really felt the Lord wanted you to know you are inscribed on his heart. You know, as you are singing Jesus, he's singing your name. You know, the word of God says that when you sleep, he hovers over you and sings over you. So as you're pouring out your heart and as you're declaring Jesus, the Lord wants you to know you are a special people to him. And, I, you know, I just want to read out Isaiah 44, verses 2. Thus says the Lord who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you. Fear not. O Jacob, my servant, and you, Jeshurun, the upright one applied to Israel as a type of the Messiah, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him who is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing upon your descendants. And they shall spring up 
among the grass like willows or poplars by the watercourses. One will say, I am the Lord's. And another one will call himself by the name of Jacob. And another will write, even brand or tattoo upon his hand, I am the Lord's. Amen. How many of you want to put up your hand and say, I am the Lord's? Amen. The Lord wants you to know tonight, fear not. There is nothing that he is not over. Everything you are facing is minimal before him. He is the way maker, the miracle waker, and you can rely on him. He is so, so faithful. Lord, we just give you glory. Lord, even tonight as we are singing Jesus, Lord, we sing with all of our hearts, knowing that you're pouring out your living water on us. So I just want you to raise up your hands as we are worshiping and just picture him pouring out his living waters on you, refreshing on you, knowing that he is dealing with everything that the enemy has brought against you. Amen.
Give him all your attention now, sing highest. Sing it straight to Jesus, look in his eyes. threshold of something. Let's just press in more. is a weapon? Do you believe that being single focused is a weapon? And I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, I am ushering you church, this church and those online, I'm ushering you into a time of single focus. And the Lord is saying, I want you to believe that as you worship, it has the power to destroy darkness. And the Lord says, some of you are burnt out in intercession and warfare because you take on the enemy before you've looked at Jesus. And the Spirit of the Lord says, I've not called you to take on every battle. I've called you to come up higher and receive the commission from me for the battle for the day. But the Lord says, I never send you into battle on an empty stomach. The Lord says, I always send you full 
of food, full of bread, full of wine, with your lamp full of oil and your body fully clothed in the armor. The Lord says, I am not one who sends you into battle with inappropriate equipment. And the Lord says, there are some here who are weary because you've come under the spirit that's been uh, in, the, in the atmosphere. And there are some because you've worn yourselves out with religious praying. And the Lord says, will you give me your focus and believe that your faith in the power of adoration is enough to start shifting things, even before you've received the commission. And I feel like the Lord wants to break us out of a passivity, like, a, a, yeah, a, 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 it's not complacency, it's a passivity. And, and so I just feel like if that's you, if you know that there's been like a bit of a passivity or if you feel you've been really weary, or maybe you, you know you're a watchman and you've just felt worn out by the battle this week, I just want to encourage you to stand to your feet. And I just want to encourage you to reach up and reach out to Jesus right now. But don't reach out to Him for help, first of all. Reach out to adore Him. Reach out to love Him right now. To fix your gaze on Him. The Word of God tells us that He will build a throne amongst His people when we love Him, when we worship Him. So let's just reach up right now. Reach up, reach up. We lift our hands to You today. We lift up our eyes to You. We lift up our eyes to the mountains. From whence cometh our help? It comes from You and You alone. We worship you and you alone. We adore you and you alone, almighty God. Because there is none who compares. There is none who competes. There is none who's more beautiful than you. There is none who compares. There is none who competes. There is none more beautiful than you. There is none who compares. There is none who competes. There is none more beautiful. Lift your voice and sing. There is none who compares. There is none who competes. There is none as beautiful. There is none who compares. There is none who competes. There is none more beautiful. Father, even now, as we look to you, as we declare, there is none who compares with you. There is none who competes with you. There is none more beautiful, Father. Even as we know that even across this land and many lands across the earth, even now, people of another faith are in 40 days of prayer and fasting. 
God, we pray even that you would reveal yourselves to them. But Lord, we say we're not subject to that spiritual yes, atmosphere. Lord, yes, Lord. We say we're not subject to it because their God does not compare to you. Yes, Lord. And He certainly doesn't compete with you. Yes, there is no competition. So Lord, would you come with you to refresh your people even now? Lord, the ones who are weary, the ones who are battle-tired, God, the ones who felt the oppression of the atmosphere this week, God, the ones who've exhausted themselves, God, with assignments that you didn't give them, if that's you, just, just gently repent. The Lord's not angry with you. He just doesn't want you to be tired. Yeah, and online as well, at home, wherever you are. There's just a sweet presence of the Lord. He's so kind. He doesn't look on us with displeasure when we do things passionately. <laughs> I think God would rather have someone who's passionate, who's slightly off assignment, than someone who can't be bothered. But Lord, we want your assignment. And even now, I believe the Spirit of the Lord is just releasing assignments to you as you look at Him. You don't need to do lots of tearing down and binding and loosing when you're declaring no one compares to Him and no one competes with Him. We do that as well, but we look at Jesus first. So Father, even now, God, lift off us the heaviness, God. I break that heaviness now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare there is no God but Jesus. Amen. You know, around the, the base of the dome of the temple, the mosque on the temple mount, I'm told that it says there is no God but Allah and he has no son. We declare his name is Yahweh and he has a son called Jesus Christ. And so why don't you just lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Let's just start lifting up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 you're the king upon the throne. You're the king upon the throne. You're mighty God, you're mighty Elohim, we worship you. Yahweh, we lift up your name. We lift up your name, Jesus. We lift up your name, Jesus. We lift up your name, Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord. You know when the prophets confer. <laughs> something's going on. Something's going on. We're, we're, we're going to continue in worship. Nikki's going to take us back into some worship in just a second. Not that this isn't worship. This is worship. Uh, but we're going to give to the Lord now through our tithes and offerings. And so the, the, the instructions will come on the screen. Um, and I've been, uh, in, in a couple of weeks' time, I'm going to be going, well, in a month's time, I'm going to be going with Dr. Sharon and Greg to the States. Hooray, hooray. And... Uh, as I've been praying for the United States, the Lord has been speaking to me, and he's been speaking to me about the rich young ruler. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to unpack that word right now. <laughs> That's for another time. But you know, the Lord has just been really impacting me with, everyone sat down. As long as you're writing, that's good. That's good. If you're tired, you can jump up and down. Um, and just add zeros on the end, yeah? before the decimal point. Um, I'm joking, partially. Um, and you can keep going, Keith, it's so beautiful. I might end up back in a swirl, you know, it's great. Um, as I was just praying this morning and just reading of the account, and Jesus, the, the rich, you'll know the story, the rich young ruler comes to Jesus and say, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus tells him, you must follow this commandment, this commandment, this commandment, the other commandment, listing off about five of the Ten Commandments. And he says, all of this I've done since I was a child. And Jesus says to him, 
this you lack, go sell all you have, give it to the poor and follow me. And he went away sorrowful because he was rich. And Jesus said, how difficult it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And then the disciples said, said, who then can be saved? And Jesus said, with man it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. I don't, I'm not saying God's asking you to sell everything you have and sow it into the offering tonight. But what God was talking to me about this morning was how willing are we to respond to the voice of God? And what he says to you to lay down or to give or to do or to go will be costly for you. And it will look different for each one of us. Uh, and I'm not trying to conjole you. I want you to tune into Holy Spirit. I want you to ask him what it looks like. Because this morning I was just praying and I was saying, Jesus, I want to be completely dead to anything that would hold me back from the fullness of everything that you have for me. You know, I, I, I don't know how old you are or how young you are or whatever, but I look at my life and I go, okay, I may have this many years left on this planet. I don't know how many, but, you know, and I'm saying to God, I want every single one of them to count. I want them to have eternal impact, eternal significance. I want to be able to look behind me when I reach the pearly gates and see a great multitude of people behind me. God anoints the yielded. And when there are areas of our heart that are held back, it becomes difficult for God to lavish His Spirit on us in the power that we want. Sometimes we're saying, like, God, zap me, and then I'll do whatever you want. It doesn't work that way. He zaps us as we go, as we do it. He empowers us as we yield and do what He says. And for so many of us, our finances are one of those areas where we're like, well, God, you can talk to me about anything else but that. And so... I don't know how much God is telling you, but I just want you to pray. Just ask Holy Spirit, what should I be doing? And if you give by standing order, praise God. That really helps uh, uh, Dr. Sharon and the leadership team plan. Uh, but this is also the month of Nisan. We've just entered Nisan, which is the first month of the year in the Jewish calendar. And this is traditionally a time where people would give the first fruits offering as well. And so some of you, God might be stirring to make a first fruits offering as well, which is different to your regular tithe. And that may be to this house, it may be somewhere else. But again, I just encourage you, tune in, ask God what he's saying for you. What would it look like for you to be yielded in this new Jewish year as we enter into the rest of 2022? How are you going to do that so that it counts for Jesus in every area of your life? So we're going to pass around the buckets. Nikki's going to lead us in worship. May we remain in awe of you, Lord, as we continue to worship you. May we never lose our wonder, Lord. May we never lose our wonder. May we be just like a child staring at the beauty of our King. May we never, may we never lose our wonder. We're in awe of you, Lord. May we never lose our wonder. Why you are beautiful in all your ways. We reverence your presence, Lord. You're beautiful. You are beautiful.
let's tell him tonight. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. So beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Let's tell him tonight. Lift your voices and tell him you're beautiful. Isn't it so good to be in the presence of the Lord? Oh, to all of our family out there online, I hope you are experiencing what we are experiencing here. The presence of God is palpable here, and I just pray that you're feeling the same thing right where you are at in your homes. And I just want to welcome, I'm, I'm aware that there's quite a few people from different nations, so welcome to those from Czech Republic. We've got people from the Midlands in the UK. Welcome to those in Germany, to Wales and California. God bless you all. You know, we're all on different time zones, but we just bless you. And please know you are in our hearts as well, okay? Um, so I'm just, I'm pleased that I get to make some am amazing announcements tonight. Um, how many of you here are married couples? If you can just show me by a show of hands. Okay, yay. So we've got some amazing married couples. Um, <laughs> Greg is saying, I'm definitely married. <laughs> That's a happily married man. He was like, Greg, Greg was going, yeah, me. <laughs> That's a happily married man. Um, so we've got a wonderful couple. Uh, many of you know Brian and Vanessa Richardson, who are pastors here. They are doing a wonderful course. It's going to be a six-week course. No, sorry, seven-week course. And it starts the 27th of April. It's going to be online on Wednesday evenings at 7.30. Apparently, it is incredible fun. It looks like so much fun that I'm sorry I'm not married. <laughs> so <laughs> this is actually open to married couples and those who are engaged and planning to get married. So um, even if you've got a great marriage, you should do this course. How many of you know us women and you men all communicate differently? Hey, like... You say, yeah, Yo, you say one thing, men say one thing, and we hear another thing, and we say one thing, and you guys hear something completely different. So this course is going to be a wonderful way to learn how to communicate in different ways, and um, it's, apparently it brings couples much closer together. So, you know, I don't know about you guys, but when I was married, I so longed to do a marriage course, and I, I did one. I went to one, um, it was an eight-week course. I went to the first two weeks on my own, no, with my husband. And then I did the rest on my own because he didn't want to <laughs> work at the marriage. Oh. But um, the reason why I say that is it takes two yeah. to make a marriage work, okay? So don't make the mistake of thinking, well, just get by. Make, do everything you can to make your marriage stronger because it really is such a gift from God. Amen? Yeah, it will be so much fun. Yeah, so I want to encourage you to do that. Um, if Victoria could kindly put on the QR code on the screen. Oh, and we've got Brian and Vanessa going to share something. Beautiful wife, Vanessa. We would like to invite you to a marriage course that we're running starting Wednesday night, the 27th of April at 7.30 to 9 on Zoom for seven weeks. This marriage course is for all kinds of marriages, whether you've been married four months, 40 years, whether your marriage is great, good, bad, or ugly. We've taught this course on many occasions and every time we have been blessed ourselves, we've learned fresh lessons about how our relationship and how we can improve our act together. Over the seven nights, we're gonna cover subjects like the art of communication, resolving conflict, the power of forgiveness, the impact of family, past and present. There's going to be lots of interaction between husband and wife during the course, but we promise you everything is private, no group discussions, mm. 
and no one shares anything publicly. Now, and the total cost of the course, which is very cheap, is £60 for the seven nights. And that includes this manual that we will post to you. We send you two copies, one for each of you. And we use these manuals right the way through the course. So, you know, do sign up. You sign up for this and you'll get blessed. I assure you of that. So for registration, please um, press the link or the uh, QR code provided after this talk. God bless you. Bless you. Wonderful. So, um, so that looks like it's going to be fun. We also have leaflets on the back table, which will have the QR code for the booking. So feel free to grab one on your way out. Okay. And then um, Dr. Sharon's going to be doing a wonderful new course, course called Profits to the Nations. Um, when Dr. Sharon tells me she's excited, then I get excited because <laughs> she said she's so excited about this course. She's going to be teaching content she's never taught before. So um, you do want to get on it. And I'm going to let Victoria play the video where Dr. Sharon tells us all about it. I cannot tell you how excited I am to share with you a new course that I'm going to be teaching. This is a course, first of all, I've lived it for 40 some odd years. Even in the last three weeks, I have probably seen over a dozen political leaders from vice president to uh, policy writers. And I was just invited yesterday to go see a head of a parliament in another nation, a group of politicians. That is what most people think of as prophets to the nations. And that's the name of the course that, that uh, I'm gonna share with you. That is only one aspect. Why do you need to take this course? Everybody is not gonna do that. If you're called to do that, we celebrate that. But you could be a prophet to the nation by dealing with the systems in your nation or the systems in other nations, you know. Think of the seven mountains, you know, education, uh, uh, finance and business, media and art, you know, and the different ones. What it means to be a prophet to the nations, and I'm going to add apostles here too, because God says, I give revelation to my holy apostles and prophets. So whether you're a prophet, apostle, or you're prophetic, in this environment, you're going to learn how to take that gifting or call you have, affect the sphere for the sake of the nation, also that you would recognize what is your sphere, but also that you would recognize what are the systems that you're called to impact. And you know, there will be a day that we will say, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God. Now, as a prophetic watchman, these are also prophets to the nations. And that is an area of prophetic prayer, that's in an area of exposing the wiles of the enemy, releasing strategies of God, uh, prayer movements. Um, also, we have those uh, prophetic worship uh, people that are filling the atmosphere with uh, prophecies and agreeing with what heaven is saying so that the will of heaven can come to the earth. And so I wanted to give you a bigger definition of what we see as prophets and prophetic people to the nations. But my heart looks like this, that there is a volunteer people in the earth that is truly the remnant and the ecclesia that says, God, we will use our gifting no matter how small or how big for the sake of impacting the nations and bringing you your inheritance, the nations. I hope you want to take this six week course. It will be beginning at the end of May and I think you will be transformed. Some people spend their life not knowing their sense of purpose. You will not be able to finish this course without realizing that you're carrying nations. So that course can be booked online at our website, which is propheticvoice.com, and you'll find the links there. Um, for those who want to do the marriage course, as well as Dr. Sharon's course, you can easily do it, because Dr. Sharon's one will be Tuesday nights, and the marriage course is Wednesday nights, okay? And they only overlap for about three weeks, hey? It's only three weeks of overlapping, but you, this will be so good. Um, it really struck me when Dr. Sharon said, no matter how small our gift is, we can bring our part, amen? So I encourage you to do that. And... Um, and we've also got an amazing uh, conference coming up, which Dr. Sharon just came back from Nigeria. 
spending time with Apostle Tommy Ariami and with him being here, they thought, why not do a conference? <laughs> so we've got an amazing conference. It's going to be this Saturday. It's not on there at, at this point, but it's going to be Saturday, the 23rd of April. So it's the weekend after the Easter weekend. It's going to be in uh, Jesus House by Brent Cross, and it's going to be a whole day event. We've got amazing speakers. We have Dr. Sharon, Emma Stark, and Apostle Tommy Ariami. So do keep an eye out. We're going to be sending information. We've got Rob Cates doing worship, Steve Teb doing worship. It's going to be a powerful day. It's going to be from morning to late night, okay? You don't want to miss it, right? Amen. So um, do stay in prayer this week. As you know, the beginning of this month marked Ramadan. So, you know, all the Muslim people are out there fasting, praying. You know, I, I believe those people are very, very genuine, truly seeking to have an encounter with God. Let's pray that Jesus invades their prayers, that Jesus invades their dreams. Amen. And stay in prayer because there's so much spiritual activity and tonight we were really trying to really let you enter into the worship because we want to occupy the space with the power of God. Amen. So remember that you belong to the Almighty God. You have full authority. Take authority over your neighborhoods so that it's the presence of God that rests in your neighborhood and not the prayers of Ramadan. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much to our wonderful worship team. We appreciate you. And I'd love to welcome... Dr. Sharon, Dr. Sharon was called out to Hungary this week. I'm sure she'll share what she can because a lot of the stuff is confidential. But she went to go meet with government leaders and pray for people. Um, she's been in lots of traveling. She only got back this morning. Oh, last night. So God bless her. She still manages to get here looking all fresh-eyed and <laughs> beautiful. We love you, Dr. Sharon. Thank you, worship team. Woo! Um, I just, uh, just lift your hands right where you are. Father, often we come to a service like this. We do come in with a bit of a uh, selfish agenda. What are we going to get out of it? But God, we just ask, what are you going to get out of it? God, that's our heart tonight. Father, that we want you to be able to say, well done. We want you to be able to say that, that, that uh, you accomplished what you wanted to accomplish in each one of us and through each one of us. Well, I'm Dr. Sharon Stone, and if this is your first time here, could you just lift your hand? Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. We have some nieces over here from Brighton. Uh, welcome. Uh, it's good to have you here. Uh, uh, and, and online, we bless you as well. It's good to have you here. Many of you uh, don't know, but the first Sunday of each month is our Prophetic Encounter Sunday, and we offer uh, prophetic words for, for those that are attending and uh, for those that sign up online. And then in the middle of the month, not this month because of Easter, uh, we have a mentoring day where we have a training day in the prophetic, and we also have the prophetic teams that are available, uh, gathered and online. So... Um, uh, there's the prophetic opportunity. And I say that because sometimes we want to turn every service here into a prophetic service. And I'll tell you what I want. I want every service to be a Jesus service, you know? And if that includes prophecy, yay, because, you know, I, I love that. But, you know, I, I always keep my priorities right uh, in, that, in that place. Now, that conference that she's speaking about, on uh, April 23rd, that's actually a training conference. So not only are you gonna kind of hear some prophetic messages, the goal is that we're, that, that we're keeping a full day of wonderful anointing and pressure a little bit, the hand of God in your back kind of moving you forward so that you can take some risks. So there'll be a lot of activations that day. So we're expecting after a day that you will feel like you've gone up a, a few levels uh, so we're pulling our anointings with Apostle Tommy, uh, uh, Prophet Emma, and myself. And I'll be honest with you. I think that, that the, and anybody that knows me knows my heart. I think we're the strongest in this nation in those areas. And so uh, come and, and receive, and, and you'll be getting something in the mail. If you're not on our mailing list, by chance, don't leave here without 
uh, making sure you speak to uh, Pastor Claudia and, and she can give you information so that we can get you on our mailing list. Well, welcome. And yes, I did just return in the last um, uh, three and a half weeks or three weeks, I guess. I've been in Nigeria for a week. I've been in Ghana for four days and I have been just returned to, from, Niger from Hungary last night. And uh, they have been exciting times. A lot of them were meeting with government people. Um, uh, I'll just share. When I meet with government people, I never say the names. And we never say what we prophesied. You know, Billy Graham said that was his one life regret. That, uh, you know, he knelt down in front of the White House after praying with President Eisenhower. And they took a media shot, you know, there. And the president never let him uh, uh, pray with him again. And so I realize I can learn from what other people do go through. I don't have to do it that way. And we have a, a pretty high level uh, grace and influence with political leaders. But at this point, I think we've probably in the last three weeks at their request, probably been with over 20 elected or appointed political leaders in the earth in person. Yeah, I mean, that's miraculous. That's miraculous. But I'm just going to give you one illustration. Of course, it won't be a name. I won't even tell you what country, so you can't. So we can't think that. But this um, one's role was, um, let's see. He had been part of their, his country's special forces at one time. He was now the man that was over the entire military of the nation. Um, he, uh, his, uh, he also deals with um, uh, different awkward immigration things from terrorism to all that kind of stuff. So he's a, uh, he's a real uh, in-charge military man. And uh, uh, so anyway, after um, speaking with him and prophesying with him, um, and he's a very uh, uh, big man as well, all of a sudden um, I looked up and the man had left his chair and was on his knees uh, before me and had taken my hand and laid it upon himself. And uh, uh, what he referred to was, was just like uh, uh, the man in the Bible. He says, I'm a man of authority and I understand authority and I've just come under a different authority. Whew. And so, um, so it was, but it was highly impactful. When you have leaders of a nation, none of them had ever had prophetic words. Uh, and they're asking for them. And uh, they've heard your name from somebody, you know. That just means I probably haven't made as many messes as some other people. And, uh, or that I've been around longer than uh, some. But, um, uh, you know, it's the world today is in crisis. And uh, people are wanting to hear what God has to say. So let's just take a moment to pray. Father, we never think lightly about your word. Father, we'd, you said your words are life. So, Father, we pray over all of those words that were put in leaders of nations. Father, right now, we ask, Father, that they would have a hundredfold. Father, that they would produce everything that they're supposed to produce. And, Father, uh, that, that uh, as a family and as a community here, we just keep the heat of your Holy Spirit on them and say, God, bring breakthrough, align nations for your purposes, bring forth sheep nations, God, God, uh, bring forth a moral, godly, righteous government. Father, bring forth uh, alignment with uh, the kingdom of God before their own nationalism in their own nations. Father, we ask for that in the name of Jesus. And we say, God, thank you for those opportunities. But God, we're asking for you to manifest what you promised. Amen. Amen. Just a, a funny statement, you know, uh, and when you're in any country that it's their election year, really all they want you to do is prophesy their next. You know, I mean, it's, it, it's, kind, of, it's kind of like that. 
And I often don't go there. That's not my thing. I, yeah, I, I really don't go there. I mean, because most of the time it's between two people, so you have a 50-50 chance. It's like someone saying, pray over me the whether I'm going to have a boy or a girl, you know? And you think, ah, 50-50, you know? <laughs> it's got to be one or the other, you know? Um, so, uh, but that's not the... That's not the biggest deal. You know, you realize that God is interested in uh, the hearts of people. And sometimes we don't like it, but we get the leaders in our nation that we deserve rather than the ones we want. Sometimes in our nation, uh, it works better to have a bit of hardship because all of a sudden the church finds their voice again and realizes they have to use their keys to the kingdom. And they have to be the ecclesia, you know, which is a, a military government term uh, for the church in Greek that's, that says, yes, we will unlock, and we'll lock, and we'll forbid, and we'll allow. And it is not just who we voted for that's going to lead our nation, but God, we're going to do our part uh, in the earth to lead our nations as well. Amen. So I'll get off that subject right now. I just uh, am glad to be back home, and I'm glad my husband was excited about being married. Uh, it's a good thing. You know, we spent the two years home together during lockdown, and uh, we realized we had never been together more than two weeks at any one time, and so things could have really gone wrong. But they didn't. We actually really enjoyed the time. And uh, so when I'm gone, uh, you know, we call once, twice. Sometimes I think we talk to each other, five, as busy as I am, five times a day. I mean, you don't want to see our phone bill. But, uh, they, but we enjoy one another. We like to bounce things off of one another, uh, you know, uh, uh, in those places. And I think that the Spirit of God wants everybody to know they have connections somewhere. So when I can call home, no matter where I am in the world, I know I've got connection. I know that whether I'm too tired to pray over the room that I'm in, that Greg will be praying for it and cleaning it out for me. You know, I know if I need God to double my sleep so I can keep doing it, I've got somebody. See, he's not even here getting to hear all this. He, he ran out for a biscuit. And um, so... You know, I've got someone that's praying for my sleep, someone that's praying that I'll have dreams, and someone that's praying that, that I'll have an easy flow with the Spirit of God and that there will be agreement. And I just want to say this. If you don't have a church family, you need people like that that will do that for you. And uh, we believe that we should not have to do those things alone. Those are things that we provide for one another, and it makes life enjoyable to be able to do that. So... Welcome here. Uh, talk to us if you're interested in a church home. But you're welcome to come uh, if this is not your main church as well. Uh, next week is Easter. And, you know, that is the probably one of the most significant times in Christian history. Because it is a time that uh, the power of death uh, was destroyed uh, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But it's also a significant time for all of us because it brings us back to our foundation and our basics that that uh, the reason we are who we are, the reason we have purpose, the reason we have destiny, the reason that, that we're not where we used to be, the reason we have mercy and a fresh start every morning, the reason that we have authority is because of what Jesus did that week, uh, isn't it? how he died and, and carried our sin, and how he was resurrected for us. But that's next week's message. But tonight, what I wanted to do, because we are a very strong prophetic church, I actually want to look at some scriptures in the Old Testament that talked about the crucifixion, that talked about uh, Jesus coming and dying. And the reason that I want that is twofold. First of all, I want you to have a fresh perspective of your own redemption. I want you to do that, but also I want you to realize that God had people prophesy it hundreds, even thousands of years before it ever took place. And, you know, when I go places and I hear people um, uh, prophesy, like I was just in Nigeria with Apostle Tomi, and, you know, he's been training there. And so I was walking by people I never met and going, oh, they prophesy like me. You know, oh, they're but it's because Tomi prophesies like me, you know, and so... So he has trained them, but they learn a certain flavor, don't they? Learn a certain style. Sometimes I think we forget to learn Bible style. 
some, you know, that we learn a, a person's style. We forget to learn Bible style. And what does it sound like when it's prophesied hundreds of years before? What does it sound like when it's prophesied, you know, thousands of years before? And what were the things that God wanted to stand out then that caused people's hope to be set um, in what God was doing? And, you know, we have such a narrow view of what prophets were in the Old Testament. If their word didn't come to pass, they would be stoned. Well, that's not necessarily true because all of those that have prophesied anything about uh, the life, death, uh, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, they were no longer living, you know, by the time it finally happened. And so, uh, you know, it was one of those that had a sovereign time to come to pass. And uh, sometimes we get used to personal prophecy. Personal prophecy no matter how wonderful it is, is conditional. And people don't treat it like that. They treat, want to treat it like a spectator. What do I mean by that? Okay, God, you said that. Now I'm going to wait and see and watch for it to come to pass. No, that's why Paul said to Timothy, do a good warfare, you know, with the words that have gone over you. That's why uh, uh, we, that Moses said, is there a prophet? Now let him intercede. That's so, you need to know those things. Otherwise, we become spectators of a prophetic promise rather than those that are partnering and participating. You can't make it come to pass, but you can do your part, okay? So I encourage you in that. So I want us to kind of learn from these Old Testament prophecies. So is it okay if I just read you some scriptures tonight and, uh, then, and just let me speak to your hearts in the middle of those things? Because I want to pull us up to a fresh place. I think when you learn a style from a person, um, it's one thing. When you learn it from prophets maybe you never met that lived thousands of years ago, you know, that, that God considered it worthy to put in the written uh, 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 book, the Bible, you know, we might learn something different. And so I want to start at the very beginning. What was the first scripture that I could find that talked about um, uh, Jesus' death and resurrection? And that's in Genesis 3. Um, uh, and I know sometimes Victoria likes to put up scriptures, but I, I don't know if I didn't give her any of these. But all of these are out of the, the English Standard Version, but it doesn't matter, um, Victoria. Uh, but I found the first prophecy about the Messiah was after the sin of Adam and Eve, and the prophetic word was actually to the serpent. And so Genesis 3, 14 and 15. And it says, The Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He, he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. What stood out to me the most here is there is a he that will crush Satan's head. <laughs> Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap. There is a he all the way back in Genesis chapter 3 that was going to crush Satan's head. Amen? Lay hands on yourself. Father, right now we receive that right from the beginning. Father, right from the very beginning, you didn't say that it was uh, uh, that um, uh, what? Your promise simply was for 2,000 years later. What you said was you spoke to the enemy the first time he brought temptation against man. And you said, it is already judged. I have a way that is going to crush your head. You are already a defeated foe. Father, I pray for each and every one here, those that are watching online. Father, we need that perspective. We need that viewpoint. We need to know your goodness. We need to know that you are not fighting another god, Satan. But, Father, he is just a, 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 a fallen demon, a fallen angel, a demon. Father, uh, Satan. And so, Father, right now, anywhere, that we have got things measured wrongly, that there's this spiritual battle between light and darkness, and we wonder who's going to win. God, we say, establish it in our hearts afresh tonight, Father, that you have put enmity between the, uh, the, the uh, 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 serpent and uh, Jesus was coming, and he crushed 
his head and he took the keys of death and he took the keys of death and hell. And Father, all of the things that you say to us after that flow through that perspective, not we're hoping you will win, not we're hoping you will come through, not we're hoping you're going to break through, not we're hoping this battle has a victory. But God, we look at it today and we said that there is a he that will bruise your head in the name of Jesus. And everybody says, yes, God. Yes, God. I love that. Yes, God. Now, I'm going to go on in Genesis chapter 3 and just uh, jump down to verse 21. And in this one, it says, And the Lord God made for Adam and his wife garments of skin and clothed them. So here he provided covering. You remember when they uh, uh, had eaten of the fruit and God still wanted to come and have communion and fellowship with them. And he's walking in the garden and going, Adam and Eve, where are you? Adam, where are you? And they, they finally responded, and they said, we're over here behind the bush, God. God says, what are you doing there? Because he had an appointment with them each evening, you know, to walk and fellowship with them and talk to them. And they said, we ate of the tree, and we're naked. You know, they had that revelation that they were uncovered. And so what did God do? He provided covering for Adam and Eve. And uh, Eve. So when you see those pictures on uh, uh, Jehovah Witnesses magazines that show Adam and Eve with the um, with the fig leaves and the and the and, and uh, the apple, that's not exactly how it happened. God killed animals, took the skin off of them, and He clothed Adam and uh, Eve. And so it was sin. It was skin that was sacrificed from innocent animals. The animals hadn't done uh, anything, but it was the promise of the one that would come one day, Jesus Christ, that would be the sacrificial lamb that would cover the sins of the world. And so that was a prophetic word that was forward-looking. So even though they covered what was their temporary need, that it was a prophecy concerning this very week, you know, the, the uh, Easter week, the death, the resurrection uh, the, uh, of Jesus Christ. Amen. Is this okay with you guys if we just look at things like this together? Exodus 12. I think it's verse 46. This is what, when um, the Israelites were called to observe the Passover. They were actually told in detail how they were supposed to do it. And so uh, this is what, uh, when they were preparing for the sacrificial lamb, they were told how to do it. And if you just start reading your Bible and you read that, you think, what is that all about? But this is what the verse is. It says, it shall, they're talking about the sacrificial lamb. It shall be eaten in one house. You shall not take any of the flesh outside the house, and you shall not break any of its bones. Now, if you were just to read that scripture, you'd think, oh, that's interesting. But in John 19, 36, our Passover lamb, Jesus Christ, the scripture says, and these things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled, not one of his bones would be broken. Father, we thank you right now that we heard Jesus cry out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But we don't know what it did to your heart, Father, to lay our sin upon Jesus there. We don't know. We heard what he had to say, but we don't know uh, what it did to your heart to do that. But God, we knew you were letting the enemy know this far and no farther. You're not breaking one of his bones, not one of his bones. Now, that may not mean much to you, but I've heard a lot of cracking of bones, and that is a sound that I can tell you. It just... I, I watched someone on TV that was doing a sport the other day, and when they fell, I could hear that crack that I knew what that meant. You know, I mean, I had over 150 breaks, you know, before the Lord raised me up and healed me. And there's, I mean, that, that, that cracking sound just, I mean, it could just turn my stomach, you know, still, even though my bones don't break now, it could just, it could just turn my stomach, that, that very sound. And yet God's saying here, all of, in Exodus, one of the first books of the Bible chronologically, and he's saying here, not one of his bones are going to be broken. You know, he's going to go through all of this, 
but you're not breaking my boy's bones. Did you hear that? Lay hands on yourself. Father, every one of us, we feel like sometimes we've been the sacrificial lamb. We feel like, why are we going through what we're going through? God, how come you're allowing this? When you're God, you know, why don't you stop this? But, Father, right now, we say that no matter what is going on, you're going, you're not breaking one of their bones. Father, that you have a no-go area over the enemy, over each one of these lives, over each one of your lives at home. There is the protection of God. There is the heart of God that goes, enough is enough. This is a line in the sand. Back off. Your head has already been crushed. Father, right now, we ask, Father, as we're going over these words, Father, that this becomes our living perspective of who you are and who we are to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So Jesus is the fulfillment, the Passover lamb. Let me, uh, let's jump all the way to Psalms. You know, Psalms has a wealth of information with talking about the Passion Week, and there's no way I can go through it, so I'm just going to choose a couple scriptures uh, here. You know, but it talks a lot about the son of David. And when it talks about the son of David, it's not talking about um, uh, Solomon. It's talking about Jesus Christ. Okay, that's, that's who he's referring to. So in Psalm 16, 8, and 8 through 10, I'll read it to you. It says, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Now, this one was kind of iffy for me to choose, and I'm going to read more of it. Because this is, this is what commentaries kind of refer to. This was Jesus' perspective from the cross and the grave. You know, this is, and so you think, ah, oh, you know, and, and this is what he says. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices and my flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to hell or let your holy one see corruption. Dear Lord, you know, dear Lord, what can we say? Uh, if that was his perspective from the cross and we're created in his image, we have a ways to go. That's all I can say. Psalms 22, 1 and 2. And this Psalms really points at the crucifixion. Um, it says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer and by night, but I find no rest. And you know, right from the cross, uh, Jesus cried out those words. And so that was a prophecy of the Easter week concerning uh, him. And so those are what we call sovereign prophetic words they had a time upon them to be fulfilled they were associated with a date in history that those things were going to be fulfilled but a lot of the words that you guys receive whether you receive them directly from the lord or whether you receive them from a prophetic team or if i prophesy them over them those don't necessarily have a date attached to that you know, I'm giving you a bit of teaching along the way. They are those conditional ones. Can you help them come to pass faster? Most of the time, yes. That's the good news. Can you thwart them and slow them down? That's the bad news. That is also a yes. And so that's why I always tell people, you know, when you've received a prophetic word, you know, take that home, write it out. Now, I actually don't write it out. I have an app on my phone that types it out for me as somebody's prophesying it, you know, because because I make it easy on myself. And then when I read it, I always ask the Lord, what's my part, God? What's your part? And what's somebody else's part? Because I can't do anything about somebody else's part. I can't do anything about God's part other than put my faith in it. But I can do my part in the midst of it. And then I know how to battle a good warfare uh, over those uh, uh, areas as well. Okay, let's see. Isaiah 25, 8 through 9. Um, this is, this Isaiah is very powerful because it talks about what was accomplished during the, uh, this week, the Passion Week, the Easter week. And so uh, verse 8 and 9 of chapter 25, and it says, He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord will wipe away tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away from the whole earth. 
for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord that we have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Amen. Just give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. If you uh, are standing for someone or you currently have any type of disease in your body that could be life-threatening, stand to your feet. I have a friend here with me tonight. Anyone else? Anyone that needs to stand for someone? Thank you for standing or standing for a family member. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Stretch your hands in their direction. If you're close enough, lay hands on them. We declare over you that Jesus has already swallowed up death forever in the name of Jesus. And the Lord is going to wipe away the tears now uh, for you. And the reproach, because we didn't earn it, that has been on us. He is taking that off of us. He is breaking every condemnation. He has forgiven the sins. He has cast it far from us. And we will say, behold, this is our God. Ah, oh, we needed him. We waited for him. And he's come to save. This is our God. We've waited for him. And we are glad and we rejoice in this deliverance, our salvation. Father, I speak over each of these bodies right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we're asking for resurrection power to come upon each of these bodies. My friend here uh, has overcome cancer in the past, and they just did a scan and noticed a, a, a cyst that they didn't think looked so good, so she'll be seeing her doctor. Well, we want one she sees her doctor for him to find nothing. I command that cyst right now. We, we command that to dissolve and leave in the name of Jesus. We say she's not going back into the same battle again. Father, she has already seen the victory. Father, we hold that victory line for her. We pray for her precious husband and her. They passed her up in crew. Father, we ask for a miracle in her body. Father, that resurrection power. Father, this is not just a hard, long fight. Father, even before she gets to the doctor, let it be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. We release that healing to her right now. We have a precious one over here that has some fibroids and some things. We release healing to you right now in the name of Jesus. Stretch your hands in, in her direction. Father, uh, uh, we just say no. We command uh, the, a reversal now. Father, that they would be made smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until there is a full uh, uh, deterioration and leaving. And Father, we speak to the very climate and the atmosphere of this body right now in the name of Jesus. And we say, do not let the atmosphere be conducive to grow anymore. We halt it and we speak that reverse right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we call forth, Father, the miracles that only you have an ability to bring. Father, we don't know all of these needs. Some of you that are close to them, if they're standing for someone else, won't you ask them for that? If they're, if, if they're standing for themselves, will you go ahead and pray for them? Please just ask those people around you what they're standing for and go ahead and pray for them right now. Please do that. You know, part of my church... You don't expect the ministry to happen from the pulpit. It happens right where you are. Eunice, won't you continue to stand? Eunice, won't you continue to stand? You know, she had uh, what was called um, temporal arthritis. And so they've got her on steroids. God already saved her life and saved her vision. But now we want that to fully go. So, Father, we release a finished work of healing to her body right now in the name of Jesus. The rest of us, who shandarabaha, we can pray in tongues. Ora papa hando dodobo si teke. He yondorabaha. We had a testimony tonight that last week we had prophesied something about somebody's eyes, and they have not had a problem with their eyes ever since. So, we rejoice in that victory. This couple right here in the striped shirt, could you just stand? Uh, can, 
can you guys turn around? You got a couple ministers in front of you and good people. Father, we just pray. Father, they're waiting a miracle. Father, they are awaiting a miracle. Father, right now, we just thank you. Father, we say this is a good day for a miracle. This is a good day for a miracle. This is a good day for a miracle. Father, right now, promise can keep us standing, but, Father, it has to be manifested sooner than later. Father, right now, we say today is a good day for a miracle. Father, we release that to them in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, just just keep praying for them a moment. You know, when people leave here, they don't say, Sharon prayed over me and I got healed. They say, God touched me and I got healed because it's your hands uh, that is releasing the power of God. He has swallowed up death. He has swallowed up death. He has swallowed up death. Amen. 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 Can everybody just give the Lord a hand clap? Thank you, Jesus. I've got just a few more, if you could just stay with me a moment. In Isaiah 50, verse 6, um, I mean, this, this scripture uh, is so detailed, it left no doubt who the Messiah was when he arrived on the scene. Isaiah 50, verse 6, I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. That was the Lord Jesus Christ um, when he was arrested and as he was being taken uh, to the cross. And as he was beaten, it said that his beard was pulled out that, that uh, he, he said, by his stripes that we are healed. They had all those stripes, uh, whippings upon his back. And that's a very uh, clear scripture. And uh, I think it's actually one of the greatest Old Testament passages um, concerning this week. Now, Isaiah chapter 53, we're going to look at 1 through 3 and verse 5 and 6. Um, this chapter alone could be a host series for Easter. So I'm just going to give you these five scriptures, but if you want to go back and prepare for Easter next week, go to, go to Isaiah 53, because it's, it's, it's um, God so wanted his words in the atmosphere, my son is coming, my son is coming. There's hope. This isn't the way things are going to stay. This is not, we're not always going to have a ritual of an altar and a, and, and a sacrifice. And we're not always going to have a priest that goes into the presence of God uh, on your behalf. This is not the way it's going to be. And so for hundreds and thousands of years before his son got there, it was, he's coming. He's coming. And I want you to be able to recognize him when he gets there. And this is what he's going to do. Isaiah 53, starting at verse 1. These are such pognate verses. It says, Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him. He had no beauty, beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. And, you know, in the New Testament, we have the up-to-date New Testament version of, of, uh, of, of that uh, prophetic word that was given. Uh, amen. Verse 5, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity, the sin of us all. Just turn your neighbor and say, I am so grateful God did that for me. And then say, I'm so grateful God did that for you. 
If you got some kids that, that have yet to receive that, say, I am so grateful that he did that for my kids. Amen. My spouse, whatever else is needed there. Amen. What a sacrifice and what a savior. Uh, Zechariah 9.9. 9. You know, today is Palm Sunday. At this verse, here we have uh, thousands of years before Palm Sunday, we have a prophetic word concerning it. Zechariah 9.9. 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humbled and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, on the foal of a donkey. For those of you who don't remember, he was coming into Jerusalem riding on uh, the, the, uh, the colt of a donkey. And people had gathered the palm trees uh, palm branches, and they were waving to him, and they were and, and they were uh, calling him. Uh, uh, what was that? What's that? Hosanna, son of David. Yes, Hosanna, and they were welcoming him in. And this is the first and the only time in Bible where we see they were doing that, that they were welcoming him in at this point. And then we saw right. Uh, at the beginning on Palm Sunday that we celebrate now, that uh, that that scripture was fulfilled uh, there. And I like to, to think of that when I read that scripture, that, you know, they cried out that day. If they wouldn't have cried out that day, I believe the rocks would have had to cry out. You know, if they hadn't have called him Lord Jesus and if they hadn't have welcomed him, I believe there was just something so much in the atmosphere from all the prophetic words that had gone forth before that were coming to a crescendo at this sovereign time, this Kairos moment in history, that the people that didn't even fully know what they believed were grabbing these branches and that they were worshiping him and they were welcoming him him into his own city at that time. Isn't that incredible? And I heard the Spirit of God say, there are angelic forces right now, he says, that are waving their hands, that are waving their palm branches in the air. And the Lord says that are celebrating, he says, the manifestation of your prophetic promises. The Lord says that there are celebrating the victory, he says, of the things that my word has already gone forth to accomplish and cannot return to me without accomplishing, says the Lord. And the Spirit of God says that even as, he says, there were those that welcomed me into my city. And he says, as part of the preparation, he says, for my death and resurrection, the Spirit of God says that many of you have known what has felt like a death, but the Lord says, I have already declared over you that I have a plan for you and it is good, that I have a future hope for you, says the Lord, and I have already declared for you even what the enemy has sent for your harm. I have the ability to turn it around for your good. And so where it feels like you might be taking a couple steps forward and a step back, the Spirit of the Lord says, I call it progression. I call it advancement. And where it feels like that you're circling the mountain again, the Lord says, oh, no, you're not. You're on a different altitude. You're on a different altitude, and you're coming up higher, says the Lord. For the Lord says, I am taking and I am turning those things that were meant for your harm, and I am turning them to your good, says the Lord. And the Lord says, I did not make this decision just when you entered into that problem area. I did not make this decision just when you entered into that relationship. I did not make this decision just when you received that report. I made this decision thousands of years ago. He says to turn this on your behalf. And so the Spirit of God says this isn't a whim. This isn't a thought. The Lord says this is who I am. And the Spirit of the Lord says I cannot be separated from my word. And I cannot be separated from my promise any more than I could my biblical promise. I cannot be separated from my promise over your life. Father, I release. I feel right now, just like on, on the day of creation, you said your Holy Spirit, that you were hovering over the waters, that there was a creative anointing, that you were hovering, that your word was getting ready to come into contact, Father, with uh, that which had already been created. And there is a hovering to create the new. Father, I believe that there's 
a hovering atmosphere in this place, Father, that you could release these people into the manifestation, into the promise, into the new, in the name of Jesus, the new in the earth today. Father, the new that what you're doing. Father, we release that right now. Um, and everybody knows that I'm not good with names. And so even when I know you for years, sometimes I don't know your name. Marianne, right? right? Yes, if you could stand. Stretch your hands in her direction. As I was prophesying that, this is what the Spirit of God said. The Spirit of the Lord says, uh, daughter, he says, I want you to know, I am raising your expectation. I am raising your hope. I am raising your faith, says the Lord. And the Lord says, daughter, I am causing you to be a woman that is not going to feel like that that uh, life has beat you down, that children have not treated you well, that your prayers have not been fulfilled in the next generation, that finances have not been fulfilled as, as you would have liked. The Spirit of God says, daughter, when did I tell you I was done, says the Lord. The Lord says, my hand is not too short, and my hand is outreached even now, and I'm touching every one of those areas. I'm touching your children, says the Lord. And the Lord says, daughter, my promise is your children are going to stand and praise me. My promise, says the Lord, is that your children are going to walk in their destiny. My promise, says the Lord, he says, is there is going to be, he says, a repentance in your children's mouths that I might replace it, says the Lord, with praise and joy, and joy. And the Spirit of the Lord says, daughter, I am doing that. And so the Lord says, daughter, do not give up, he says, on your prayers. For the Lord says, daughter, your prayers are working. And even though you have not been able to see them, they are working on your behalf. And the Lord says, I am turning around some things for you. And you said, well, God, why couldn't you do it sooner, God? And the Lord says, daughter, he says, I am not late says the Lord. But the Lord says, there are some that only learn from hard consequences. And the Spirit of the Lord says, so there's a little of life's teaching that I has a, have allowed that I might be able, when the turn comes, that it be fulfilled and they f that it be finished and they not have to go through those things again, says the Lord. For the Lord says, my declaration over you is I am faithful. I am faithful. I am faithful. And if you're close enough to her, I see a few hands laid on her. I, you've not mentioned this to me, but Father, I release healing into her body right now in the name of Jesus. Father, there's some things where she's felt that drain. She's felt that weakness. Father, she's felt that weariness. Father, she's lost that umph. Father, right now we just say fortify her afresh. Whatever area needs to be healed, bring healing to it. Father, we release it to her in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Two last scriptures. Zechariah uh, 11, 12. It says, then I said to them, it seems good to you, give me my wages, but if not, keep them. And they weighed out as my wages 30 pieces of silver. That was a prophetic word concerning Jews, uh, Judas betraying uh, Jesus Christ for the 30 pieces of silver. And so here, one of these most sinister events during the Easter uh, weekend and season was predicted here that there was going to be a mount that, um, that was going to be paid off for the betrayal. Um, Father, I just pray over each one of us. Father, we're not robots. So even though we've been predestined for salvation, you've given every one of us in here free choice to be able to serve you. But God, we thank you in the midst of the free choice that you have given us. Father, there are some God events that are going to take place regardless. Father, that you are coming back. Father, that, that, uh, that, that, that the wheat and tares may grow up together now. But, Father, that there will be a day that they will be separated. You declared, Father, that there, there is a day that the, the, the one doing the harvest is going to uh, that is uh, taking the harvest is going to uh, override or go faster than the one that is, is planting. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just say there's a great harvest in the earth. And, Father, we want to be a part of that even in a greater way. Father, we thank you, Father, that uh, we don't have a choice that you say we're going to live in a day of wars and rumors of wars and famines and earthquakes. And, Father, those are assigned but you said 
I tell you these things that you might be at peace. Father, right now, we release, Father, your peace over each of these. There's some amazing things. And you said the enemy is angry because he knows his time is short. And so, Father, we know that many of these are going to fill, Father, uh, the, the shakings of the enemy. But, but just as you said these things over 2,000 uh, years ago, thousands uh, more than that, that, that these things were going to happen, God, your eyes are on each one of these to bring them through, to bring them in in victory. Father, to not allow uh, more to come against them than what they can handle, because you promised that. So, Father, I ask for your keeping power. But, Father, we ask right now that we're not going to go through like what we did with the pandemic or the COVID. We didn't know what to expect. We didn't know how long. We didn't know if the statistics they were giving us were true or not. Father, we didn't know those things. It made room for fear, the unknown. We're not moving into that place anymore. Father, we're moving into a place that you wrote history before history came to pass. And so, Father, right now, that there are pillars of history that you have promised that are coming into our present and one of those is that there is a day of great darkness but let my glory rise upon you and and and, the, and that there will be those that will come to the brightness of your shining there will be a great shaking that I might release the gold and that I might release the silver and that the silver and gold are mine and I'm shaking it loose that I might be able to get it to my people, uh, says the Lord. Father, right now, we rely, Father, on your word. And Father, we thank you just like you you put it down so that we knew that, that these things were going to take place. You have already said that over each of these lives. Let it be established. Amen. Last scripture, Zechariah 12.10. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy so that when they look on me, on him who they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. Father, we thank you right now that grace and mercy is available to each one of us. Father, we know that our own personal sins were part of what pierced uh, G Jesus on the cross. Father, um, uh, and we thank you that you've even carried that off of us. But, Father, we just, we just want to say here 2,000 years later, God, we don't take that for granted, and we're grateful. God, we're grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful. We're grateful. God, we just thank you, Father, that you went through what you went through, Father, so that we don't have to. You said a seed is going to go in the ground and die, that there might be a generation that lives without having to pay that price. I know some people that think they're the sacrifice, but Jesus was the sacrifice. Father, we break that victim mentality. And, Father, we release that your sacrifice was full. It was paid in full in the mighty name of Jesus. If you could just stand to your feet. I hear the Spirit of God speaking over you. And I just um, don't lift your hand on this one. It may be for someone at home. I feel like you're on your third marriage, and you said this is the worst one of them all. You know, don't I ever learn, uh, um, you know, uh, what is the matter with me? Don't my prayers work? And I really felt like that the Spirit of God says, I'm touching your thinking. I'm giving you a new perspective. The Lord says, yes, you've made some ba bad choices. But the Lord says, I am still working things out for your good, says the Lord. And I'm still showing my arm of mercy and my arm of deliverance on your behalf uh, says the Lord. And so if that's for somebody here, we just say amen to that. If that's for you at home, take that. That's not always an easy one to lift your hand for. I saw someone else where you said, God, you have given me wealth twice in my life, and um, I have not stewarded it well. And now I'm at a place where I don't believe you're going to give it to me again, and yet I'm in great need. Um, again, that might be home, that might be in this room. Father, we thank you. Father, that when we miss destiny, you find a way to bring it around again. When we miss purpose, you find a way to bring it around again. When we have been thrown by a horse, Father, you bring the horse around again and you go, will you get up and ride? Will you get up and ride? Let's do it again. 
Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just speak, Father, that hope, Father, and that ability, Father, to get up again. And the Spirit of the Lord uh, uh, is reminding you of the scripture, though you fall, how many times? Seven times that you will rise again. Father, right now, I pray a resiliency for the hours that we're going into, the days that we're going into. Father, that there will be such a resiliency upon your people. Father, that, that uh, they will just have that bounce back ability. Father, I pray for each of these. And I release a sending anointing upon your people tonight. Father, that they would be sent to family members that they're going to be with this week during the Easter. Father, that they would be sent, Father, to uh, uh, work colleagues and those in the community. Father, because you could talk about you at Easter that yeah, maybe you didn't talk about any other time. Father, right now, we just release that sending anointed upon them. Father, that they're going to represent you well. They're going to represent you well. And, Father, they're going to be able to say, my, my Jesus' death, resurrection was told about thousands of years ago before it ever happened. Father, we thank you for the testimony that brings men and women into encounters to know you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, real quickly, if, you're, um, if you happen to be the one that I talked about, the finance thing, uh, if you could just kind of come up here after everything's over and just let me speak to you a moment because I, I felt like the Lord had told me something that I'd rather say privately. So uh, uh, just do that. Uh, this beautiful blonde, I've forgotten your name again, Zara, uh, stretch your hands in uh, her direction. Father, we just thank you for this uh, uh, woman. I love the hair color, by the way. It's great on you. Father, we, we just thank you for her. I heard the Spirit of God say this. The Lord says, daughter, he says, right now, you're having to carry a lot in your own family, says the Lord. The Lord says, daughter, he says, it's as if uh, that there's some high highs and low lows and a, a real uh, a roller coaster of emotions and not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring or even what it's going to look like or, or where you would live or, or how you would function. And the Spirit of the Lord says, daughter, he says, there's always a time in relationships when you kind of pass the baton back and forth and one might carry it more than another. Right now, you're holding the baton, says the Lord. And the Lord says, daughter, I am listening to your prayers. The Lord says, daughter, I am taking you from faith to faith, glory to glory, strength to strength, says the Lord. The Lord says, daughter, you're speaking over your home. You're driving out fear. You're driving out worry. You're driving out anxiety, says the Lord. And the Spirit of God says, daughter, he says, you're creating a habitation. You're creating a sanctuary for my presence, for a regrouping, for, for an atmosphere of life. And the Lord says, daughter, you're doing well. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord speaking over you. The Lord says, daughter, he says, there was a time, he says, when others around about you thought you were the fragile one. And the Lord says, daughter, you are not that one any longer, says the Lord. For the Lord says, daughter, he says, many fold up under pressure. But the Lord says, daughter, he says, you have been, what do you call it, tempered by pressure, says the Lord. And the Lord says, daughter, it has brought forth a whole new strength on the inside of you. And I have forged that strength into a great sword, says God. And the Lord says, daughter, I'm going to use that sword, he says, in your battle against the enemy. But I'm going to use that sword to cut off the unnecessary battles as well, says the Lord. And I'm going to use that sword, says the Lord, he says, so that the enemy is reminded that you are well armed, says God. Father, we just bless Zara. Thank you for this mighty woman. Amen. 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 Well, we just want to tell you we love you. Uh, we thank you for uh, uh, having been here with us tonight. We enjoyed worshiping with you and those online. Remember, this week is Ramadan week. Uh, keep the atmosphere full of the praises of God. Uh, uh, remember that people are more open to hear you talk about Jesus than any other time. So please uh, use your testimony that God has uh, in you. And uh, for those of you that this uh, is your home church or you want it to be, uh, we, since the pandemic, as we've gathered back together, it's been wonderful. We've come back together many times. We only have standing room. Our numbers are not our issue. Our finances are not our issue. Our infrastructure is our issue. We do not have much infrastructure here. And because, you know, one of it, part of it is my fault. 
I raise people up, and I love sending people out. I love blessing people and getting them out there where they need to be and fulfilling what they're called to do. But I need to keep back a few. <laughs> you know, we, we need some infrastructure. And so, you know, sometimes when you say volunteers, you think of just coming to doing a chore. That's not what we're thinking. I actually need someone to come alongside with the amount of travel that I'm doing. And uh, uh, Pastor Claudia's job is full as well. And Pastor Tem is, is pastoring another church as well. Someone that is willing to come in and, and take the reins and help us build the infrastructure for uh, Children's Church, for all the different things that, um, that anybody and community needs so that we don't have to have people having babysitters for their children when their children are not to be here worshiping together with us and that we ought to have uh, those that can counsel. We have co-groups that want to be out there evangelizing, and we don't have anybody uh, that is um, uh, to monitor or to help train for the infrastructure. So if that's you, you need to have a chat with us. But if you know somebody that that's their skill set, then you need to let us know who they are. So God bless you. Give somebody a hug on your way out. Good to have you with us. <laughs>